It was a quiet Thursday morning. The sun had just started to peek through the clouds as morning began. The peacefulness was shattered by the sight of smoke from a house. The neighbors quickly dialed 911 and police and firefighters arrived shortly after. The firefighters rushed into the house, their faces blanketed by the thick smoke and horses in hand as they attempted to put out the flames. As they made their way through the house, One of the firefighters made a grim discovery on the living room couch. Lying on the couch were the remains of a woman. One would have assumed that her death was caused by the fire. But a good look at the evidence left behind, it was quickly determined that the fire was only set up to cover a violent murder. Join us as we uncover the mystery behind the murder of Ronley Ratliff. We are back once again in the United States and in a twist of fate in Indiana. Indiana, the Hoosier state, is a land of contrast where history and innovation meet. And the natural beauty of the countryside is matched only by the vibrant energy of its cities. Indianapolis is a motor capital of the world as it hosts the prestigious Indianapolis 500 car race every year. Indiana is also known for basketball, which was invented there in 1891. in the small town of Springfield by James Nesmith. However, Indiana's history is rich, spanning from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement. The state boasts highly diverse communities, ranging from the busy streets of Indianapolis to the serene hills of the south. Here we find Mosville. Mosville is a small town in Indiana with a rich history. Its population of less than 10,000 people is more enough to fit in a stadium. which means that the chances of people knowing each other in the town are very high. Its charming downtown district offers antique shops, specialty stores, and local eateries. Pioneer Park is a local favorite with a beautiful lake, picnic areas, playgrounds, and walking trails. The Mooseville Consolidated School Corporation is known for excellence in education in the state. But what really makes Mooseville special is its strong sense of community, including annual celebrations, and the thriving local businesses that offer a warm and welcoming atmosphere to visitors. Here we find Ronley K. Ratliff, who was born on March 14, 1980 in Martinsville, Indiana, to parents Ronald J. Ratliff and Sandra Allen. She was a graduate of Mooseville High School and worked as a secretary for her parents' business, Allen's Body Shop in Mooseville. She had worked at her parents' business for four years, She had also previously worked for Union's Planters Bank. Ronley was a sweet girl who did not like attention. In high school, she wanted to become a marine biologist, but later changed her mind and wanted to pursue art and design. She usually stayed at home and did not attend parties much. But when she did, she did not drink. People thought of her as smart, quiet, shy, and polite. On April 14, 2004, 24-year-old Ronley went to spend the night at her parents' house at 5354 Deha Road, although she also had her own apartment in Mosville. She spent the evening watching a movie with her parents and went to sleep at around 9:30 p.m. The next morning, Ronley's parents left for work early and said goodbye to her as she slept on the living room couch. A few hours later, the house was on fire and Ronley was found dead. But why? A few theories and suspects stand out. This being an ongoing cold case investigation and with almost no information released to the public, it's a really hard one to cover. It has been quiet for a while, but the family did not lose hope, evident on Facebook. They posted numerous posts encouraging the people to turn on leads to help solve the case. I also found out about the case through Reddit. where a user, I really miss Buffy, had posted. So, let's start with the theories. Theory 1. Ronnie felt her mother might be in arms way. Said Kim Stout, her aunt. She declined to elaborate any further. After reading that statement, I had a few questions to ask myself and to ask you. According to the statement, was she killed by people wanting to harm her mother or by 
people who want to teach her mother a lesson or just retribution for maybe something her mother had done. Either way, this is just a speculation and should be treated as such. Theory number two. Kimberly Sink, Ronnie's aunt, had her own theories about who might have wanted and is dead. She said Ronnie had threatened to turn in drug users or dealers and probably they had killed her to make sure that she did not tell on them. If you think about it, it makes sense. She supported the idea with the fact that Ronnie had decided to sleep at her parents' home that night instead of going to her apartment. Perhaps she was afraid of someone and that someone had caught up with her the next day. Theory number 2.1 The police ruled out family members and lovers as she was not in a steady relationship and as you know, many of the cases, the first suspects are either their spouses or the family members. We do not know the exact cause of death or if there is any evidence of sexual assault. We do know, however, that they lifted DNA samples from her body and if they found something, they have not stolen. Let's move on to suspects. There are two suspects involved in this case. The suspect number one is Brian Keith Brown. Morgan County investigators found the 33-year-old Brian in Marion County. They were keen to note that he was not a suspect, but they had hoped that he had some information about the death of Ronley. Brian was, however, wanted on numerous charges, including showing pornographic material to a minor. The police suspected that he may have made acquaintances with the killer or killers. He was not helpful and refused to talk about anything without a court appointed attorney present. If he ever did talk, it was probably not helpful. As I was doing the research, I found one article naming a person called Jeffrey Voss. Jeffrey Voss has a criminal history that includes three counts of criminal confinement in Vago County armed robbery in Lake County and Marion County. He is also a person of interest in two unsolved murder cases, Buffy Ray Browdy's and Ronnie Ratliff's. According to WHTR, he removed the clothes of the two victims and uncuffed them. One of the victims is called Christina Teddy. He is charged with her rape and murder. Christina was a 12-year-old girl and redrew her body in a creek. Voss also wrote to Marion County prosecutor to plead guilty and ask for the death penalty in the Christina Tedder's case. If he was involved, we don't know for sure. Dear Ronley's family and friends, While there are no words that can take away the pain and sorrow that you are feeling right now, please remember that your loved one will always be remembered and cherished. I hope that you find comfort and solace in the memories you have shared together and the love that surrounds you. I hope the perpetrators are caught soon and justice is served to blame closure. That's all for today. See you next time. Please take care.